everyone, welcome. Today we're gonna to learn how to calculate running totals using Power Query. I'm gonna show you how to calculate those running totals for a whole list or how to calculate it per category. In our example, will be per month. If you like what you see here, remember to subscribe, give a thumbs up and share. With that, you help me to grow in YouTube and without further ado, let's start. Here we have a table with the daily sales. Let's say this goes from January 1st, 2023 up to November 30th, 2023. Okay. So we are gonna calculate the running totals, as I said, for the whole list from the first day of the year until November 30th. As you can see here, 265,059. Or if you need to calculate running totals per month, we're gonna see that as well. Here on the second table, you can see that the running totals go for the month of January. Uh, stop right here. The calculation stops right there. And then start calculating those running totals again, starting in February 1st. Same thing happens with March 1st, and so on and so forth. Let's start by bringing this table to Power Query. I'm going to right click inside of the table and get data from table range. I'm using Microsoft 365, Control Shift plus to zoom in. Control shift minus to zoom out. And I have uh, some solutions already here. Here is the name of our query, demo one as the name of the table. I'm gonna double click there and say sort and press enter. Uh, I'm gonna hide the query section. So we have more space here on the table. And you can see that Power Query has created one step for me. Change type, I don't need that just yet. I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna stay with the source. From here, I'm just going to keep the column date and daily sale. I don't need the other columns. And to do that, I'm going to go to the formula bar. At the end, I'm going to open a double set of square brackets. I'm going to say uh, the date will be the first column that I want to keep, comma. I need to open a new set of square brackets. And I'm going to say daily sale. Press enter. And now I have the two columns I'm going to be working with. And I do this because this is the only information that I will need when we finish our query. So there is no point for me to keep the two columns the whole process. From here, I'm going to add an index. I can go to add column, index column. But if I do it like this, I'm going to start from zero. And I don't want that. I want to start from one. I could come here and select from one instead of zero. I can remove this step and then select from one. Or I can just change here in the formula bar, this zero is telling Power Query which number will be the first number on that index column. So I'm gonna just replace that zero for a one. I'm gonna press enter. And now you can see that my index column starts from one. Uh, from here, I'm gonna rename this step as IDX. So I know that this is the index column. And from here, I'm going to add a custom column so I can calculate my running totals. So here, um, beside the formula bar, I'm going to click at FX to add a new step. And this step is bringing the table that is coming from the previous step, IDX, which is this table that we are seeing here. So to the equal, I'm going to say table add column. Open parentheses is asking me for a table that I have already here from IDX, comma. The name of the new column will be YTD for year to date. Uh, I provide that inside of quotation marks because it's a text. And now I'm going to provide the calculation that I want to process inside of a, that new column. I'm going to provide that as a function. So I will provide the keyword each. From here, I'm going to provide the function list range, open parentheses, and it's asking me for a list as list. First, I want to say that I want to bring the table from my step index or ITX. And from there, I want to bring the content of the daily sale column as a list. Remember that in projection, one set of a square bracket will bring that content as a list. So daily sale. I'm going to go out of the closing square bracket, comma, offset number, uh, offset as number, as it says returns a subset of 
the list beginning at an offset. So that will be zero, comma, and count as nullable number. Well, the count will come from my column index. Go to the end, close parenthesis for table at column, press enter. And now if I go and look inside of those lists here, if you just click on the right where it says list, you will see the content. Now that I have those lists here, nested lists, after the each, creating my formula bar, I want to add the list sum function to this list. So I'm gonna add all those items, right? So I'm gonna go to the end, plus parentheses, end. And now I have my running total, 788 plus 789, I have 1,587, 1,587 plus 778, 2,365. Great, that's what I needed. And these are the running totals for a whole list. Now, if the list is too long, your process is gonna be very slow because we're working with lists and these lists need to be generated every single row. To avoid this to be too slow, so I'm gonna select this, Control C, I'm gonna insert a step here between IDX and Custom One. And I'm gonna go to IDX, add a new step. And yes, I want to insert a new step. I'm gonna say, okay. And from here, list buffer, open parenthesis. I'm gonna paste the value that I copy from the formula bar in the next step. And I'm going to press enter. By doing this, this list stays in memory. It's not recalculated every single row. And then I'm going to go to my custom one step here. And actually, let me go back to custom two and I'm going to say list buffer, LP. And I'm going to go to the last step, custom one. And of course, it's giving me an error because table at column now is referring to the table that is coming from LB step, which is not a table, it's a list. We just need to change that to IDX. That's where our table is. Also change LB daily sale. I'm gonna change this because this will come from the list buffer that is in the step LB, press enter. And now we have the same result, but it will be faster. Just keep in mind that if you use a buffer, that will use memory, okay? So this is the result that I was looking for. I can just select the column index and delete, and I have the three columns that I need. From here, I can select one column, Control A, go to transform and detect data type. Now I have the final columns. They will always have the same name, so I, I'm not too concerned about these hard-coded values. Uh, one thing that I noticed when I detected the data type, I have date and time. I can change that here uh, where you see the calendar and the, the, the clock. I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna just select date and I want to replace the current uh, value and I have just my date, okay? So that is for calculating the running totals for the whole day. Let's calculate running totals. Vermont. Let's expand the query section. Right click, new query, other sources, plan query. And from here, I'm gonna to go to my previous query, solved, the one that we just finished. I'm gonna to go to the source step. I'm gonna just copy this on the formula bar, control C, so I can get exactly the same starting point. I'm gonna go back to my query one, go to the formula bar, control V to paste and press enter. So this is my starting point. I rename this query, double click at the name, press enter and hide the query section so we have more room here on the table. Add column, date, month, and I'm going to say start of the month. So all the items from the month of January will have January 1st. All the items for February will have February 1st and so on. Based on that, I'm going to select the column start of month, right click, group by. And from here, I'm going to say that the new name, new column name will be A. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to keep it. So a and then operation will be all rows. And uh, let me go back one step and rename it where it says insert the start of month. So A S, -S O M, press enter. And my last step will be group. That's fine. You can see that I have one line per month. Now we're going to modify these nested tables. From here on my formula bar, I'm going to expand and I'm going to remove 
all of this from my table group. So if I press enter, I still get exactly the same information. From here, from the each, shift enter to go to the next line on the formula bar. I'm going to say let shift enter again. I'm going to say A equals, that's my variable, and the value of that variable is the content of every single month. Let's say in this case, it's what I'm seeing here. And from there, I'm going to say comma, shift enter to go to the next line. I'm going to say B equals, and I'm going to insert the index column as we did it in the previous example. So index. Here, table at index column. Open parentheses. The table will come from my variable A, which is uh, the table that we are seeing right here. Comma. What is the name of the new column that will be inside of quotation marks and it will be index? Uh, comma. And what is the initial value? Remember, we need number one. For default, it gives you uh, an increase of one, so I don't need to provide the next parameters. Then, after the closing parentheses for the table at index column, I'm going to provide a comma, shift enter, and I'm going to say in. Shift enter to go to the next line again, and I'm going to say three. I want to return the value of my variable B. And let's see what we have. And oh, yeah, I, I should not write the comma because it's the last step or last variable. So I don't need to provide the comma. I'm going to press the check mark here. Yay! And now you see that I have an index inside of my nested table. From there, I'm going to go back to the formula bar. I'm going to provide the comma now uh, after the closing parenthesis for the variable uh, C. Shift enter to go to the next line. C equals. And I need to add a new column. Table add column to the table that is coming from my variable B, which are this table that we see in this case in the second row is this, this table. And the new column will be YTD inside the quotation marks because it's text and the calculation that I want to perform inside of that column, I need to provide a function. So I'm providing the keyword each. And I'm gonna say list range right here. Open parentheses, the list is gonna come from my variable B, which are these tables with the index uh, column included. And I need to provide one set of square brackets to bring the value of the column daily sale as list. After the closing square bracket coming, the offset number will be zero and the count will come from my column index inside of this uh, nested table. And I think that's about it. And let's go. And now I want to return the value of my um, variable C. So go there, press enter and C. Now we have lists inside. If I click at any of these tables and if I go here and click beside of the list, uh, where it says list, now you see that I have those values, right? So I'm going to remove this list step. I just wanted to show you. And now I need to add after the each some, list some, open parentheses, go to the end, closing parentheses, press enter, or if that doesn't work, then click at the check mark. And now you can see that we have the running totals per month. Uh, I have this information ready. I can just combine these uh, tables. So I can click at FX. After the equal, I'm going to say table combine right here, open parentheses, to the tables uh, as a list. The tables are included in my column A, and I need to provide that information as a list. So one set of square brackets, press enter. And here I have all my tables combined. I don't need a start of month, and I don't need the column index. I can use the second parameter for the table combine function and say which columns I want to combine, which columns I want to keep. I can say uh, as any, so I'm going to provide that as a list. And I'm going to uh, provide the quotation marks for the text. Go to the end, press enter. And now we have the only three columns that I want to keep. Here we have the running totals for these days. Let's go to February 1st, if that worked properly. Here we have February 1st. And now we have the calculation of the running totals starts right over here. So our process is working properly. Select one column again, Control A, go to transform, detect data type. I'm going to say replace current. Yay! And now we have the table ready. I hope you find this information useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share. With that, you can help me to grow in YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.